let's talk about the experiment of combustion analysis. So combustion analysis is a way to determine the molecular formula of a hydrocarbon using an experimental setup as we see here. So we, if it, we have a gaseous hydrocarbon, we would pump this through um, in, in a piping system into the furnace. Um, and if it's a solid sample, it would be something that would be placed on the bottom here and then burn inside a sealed container um, of this furnace, which is heated to um, beyond the ignition temperature of the hydrocarbon, it can be thousands of degrees, red hot furnace. And so a combustion reaction, as we know, is going to produce H2O and CO2. It's going to be hot enough that water is going to be in the form of steam as a gas, and CO2 will as well. And they'll flow down a tube connecting um, the apparatus to a couple of traps. The first is going to prevent water from passing and filter it out in a water trap, and then the CO2 continues on, and then it gets caught in a CO2 trap later on. So the difference in the mass of these traps will be equal to the experimental quantities of H2O eliminated in CO2. Well, it turns out that this relationship that we see here um, governs how we determine the molecular formula of the hydrocarbon. And so what we see is that for every mole of CO2 produced, this isn't a balanced equation, more of a keeping track of the moles produced. We're in excess oxygen and we don't know the hydrocarbons, so we can't balance. But we do know that the only source of carbon is CO2. And so for every mole of carbon that's in our starting material, the unknown hydrocarbon, that's going to be equal to the moles of CO2 that we get. And because there are two moles of uh, water for every um, hydrogen that we have in our hydrocarbon, this is based on other um, combustion reactions, um, we know that a compilation of data, we know that the source of hydrogen in that water is the hydrocarbon and there's two for every water molecule that we get. And so what we do um, is the following. We can do a combustion analysis from the data. And so here's the data that we have in our example reaction. We start with what we recovered. We recovered 5.40 grams of carbon dioxide. We recovered 3.313 grams of water. And so anytime we're doing a stoichiometry problem, we've got to convert to moles first. And so if we do that, 5.40 grams divided by 44.0 grams per mole, we can go ahead and write that out in a, in a proper um, stoichiometry problem here, just so we can make sure our units cancel, everything's going good. So grams of CO2, we want to divide by grams of CO2, 44.0 grams per mole, one mole of CO2 per 44 grams of CO2. And we know that there's going to be a mole of carbon for every mole of CO2 from our combustion analysis expression above. And so we can cancel here, cancel, and we get moles of carbon. And that number comes out to, for CO2, 0.1227, but also for carbon, since it's one to one, we get 0.1227 moles of C that are in our starting um, alkene here. So that X, we know we've got moles. We can figure what that is based on uh, what we're going to do, which is a, uh, essentially an empirical formula type problem. And so then we look at water and we say, all right, well, water um, stoichiometry here, 3.313 grams to grams never works. We've got to convert to moles because everything weighs something different, but everything combines at whole number ratios. Grams cancels, we left with moles. We know grams per mole is a legitimate expression. That's one we can use. We can never do grams to grams. We can do the molar mass grams to moles. And for water, that's 18.0 grams per mole. And if you're, if you're keeping track of the moles of water here, you're gonna see that that is 0 0.1840 moles. But we've gotta remember that for hydrogen, there are two moles of hydrogen from our starting hydrocarbon here for every one mole of H2O. So we've got to multiply by two in a combustion analysis. When we do that, we now have 0.3681 
moles of hydrogen. At this point, it's like an empirical formula problem. We can simply take the smallest of the two, which is carbon, divide it by itself and then the other moles that we have to get our number. That means one carbon in our empirical formula. Let's see if we get another whole number if we have to multiply here to, to eliminate a fractional component. Let's see. So we've got 3.681. It's bigger than 0.1227. And so we divide those out. We actually get 3 times about 0.12. Well, that's pretty close to 36. So 3 to 1 hydrogen to carbon. So our empirical formula from our data of our starting alkane is CH3. Well that can't be a full formula as we're going to learn from Lewis structures. Carbon likes to make four bonds. But we were given another piece of data that says the molecular weight of our starting alkane is 30 grams per mole. And so we know that the molecular weight is the empirical weight times some number. Um, and so if we can find out what that number is, that number can also be multiplied by our empirical formula to get our molecular formula. If we do this, we end up with N is the molecular weight over the empirical weight. Well, the molecular weight was given to us as 30, and the empirical weight, 12 plus 3 hydrogens, 3 times 1, there that is 15, so 15 grams per mole. That N is 2. So it turns out our molecular formula is C2H6, and that is ethane, if we're keeping track of nomenclature. So C2H6.